Hello, and welcome to Starlight Talks. I'm here with my mom, Gail Carrier, and we're going to be talking about fear. And it's a lot of things that I think parents have to deal with is getting over fear parenting. I think teachers do some fear teaching. Um, and so dealing with with a child when you're acting out of fear is never going to have a good outcome. And so we're going to talk about that and ways to, to figure that out and deal with that. So check out the website, autism.com. We have our launch party coming up. So RSVP to that. That's on the calendar. Go check out, I have a workshop in Florida. So if you're going to be in Florida, um, in April, that'll be on there, which is coming up really soon. I know. So you, you can check, get tickets for that. Um, yeah, so check out all our cool events. We got a lot of cool stuff going on. This is Jax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a blog on the website as well, artism.com, um, where I read about living on the spectrum. Hopefully we'll have some new ones coming out for Autism Awareness Month, which is starting April 2nd, because April 1st is April Fool's. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really excited about April. A lot of cool things for Autism Awareness or Autism Acceptance, I don't think, depending on what you want to go with. I'm, I'm cool with everything. <laughs> um, so yeah, and come back next week. Um, hopefully I'll have... Uh, Iris, come on. She is a really cool person who has Crohn's disease, and um, she's, she's going to tell her story about um, her invisible disability and how she's dealt with that. And so we're going to talk about ableism and all those really fun things that come with look, passing as neurotypical or abled when actually you're not and what that looks like because there's a lot of stereotypes around that and misconceptions and so we're gonna break it all down next week to come back next week because I do these live streams every week at seven o'clock on Wednesdays so Pacific Standard Time so if you're on the East Coast that's 10 o'clock <laughs> I mean I, I know there's tons of time zones and I know I have people <laughs> all over the world i wish i could name all the time zones but it's the same time right now next week <laughs> so i think in australia it's thursday <laughs> so <laughs> that's confusing <laughs> but um all of my live streams are saved so you can even watch it so if it's like four o'clock in the morning for you guys it's saved on the face artism facebook page if you click on videos you can see all the past live streams and I'm trying to keep the YouTube page updated as of right now it's updated with everything up to last week so if you go to Starlight Talk on YouTube um, that's all linked on everything I think so you can go check that out if you like YouTube better or would rather watch it there so I have like 10 subscribers so thank you guys for subscribing there <laughs> Um, yeah, so as usual, start leaving your questions, comments, and we'll get to as many as you can by the end of the hour. Thank you for joining. <laughs> so do you want to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Gail Carrier, Chloe's mom, and the founder of Autism, a co-founder with William and Chloe. And um, this has been a, I'm sorry, I have my, my dog here that's wants to be part of the show tonight. Um, this has been a wonderful journey to be on with Lillian and Chloe. Um, we call it our crooked journey because um, not having all the information about autism until they were 16, we had a lot of um, ups and downs and then uh, a lot of learning we had to do together. And, always been a great teacher to me as well as everyone else. I'm really proud of her. <laughs> um, so, where do you want to start? 
So, one of my favorite stories to tell is the tricycle. Oh, okay. So, a really big fail moment for mom. Um, Chloe didn't ride a bike, a two-wheeler. And we were shopping for a two-wheeler for her sisters, uh, both Lillian and Chloe. I mean, Chloe and, excuse me, Lillian and Tess. <laughs> And they had this wonderful granny bike, which is like a big tricycle. And they had the big one, the standard size, but then they had a smaller one. And Chloe fell in love with it. This is perfect. I can, I can, you know, ride this bike. So we got it for her, and I was really nervous about her riding it to school, um, that the kids were going to make fun of her. So what I think I was doing was trying to prepare her for what might come. And I, I told her, hey, this is going to go one of two ways. People are going to, you know, your friends are going to love it and think you're super cool, or they might make fun of you. You know, either way, it's awesome, but I just wanted to prepare you. And so now I know what I was doing. I didn't at the time. Um, I was projecting my fears and that's what we call fear-based parenting and I was projecting all of the things that I thought could go wrong that might go wrong onto her and they hadn't happened yet so what I was telling her is you're kind of a dork and you're going to be made fun of if you ride this bike because nobody rides this bike that's what she was hearing and and it's not what I meant but it's definitely what was coming out of my mouth <laughs> and when she came home everybody loved it and I was so wrong and she was so cool and so but I put all this negativity in her head and her body and her being as she was leaving to go to school um, and it was really painful and um, you know, I know better now that what I should have just done, even if I thought all those things, prepare myself if she comes home crying, I'll be there for her. But I don't need to say all those things. I don't need to just be like, have a good time, man. Enjoy your new bike. That's all I needed to say. Um, I mean, at the time, I didn't know, but I was probably in defense mode. And for years, I thought that you were embarrassed of me that you wanted me to present a different way or act differently, that you wanted a different child. You're like, you wanted a perfect, like, mini me. Mm -hmm. Where, like, we go out to dinner, I didn't feel like dressing up. You're like, it felt like you were embarrassed when I didn't dress up. And, or if I wore, I was so into experimenting with my clothes. I wore these silly hats. I wore suspenders. I wore bright colors. I mean, it, you, I'm not a normal person when I post the clothes, as you can tell. But I'm Jack's sure the quiet. pictures I posted online, I wear yellow every day. And so trying to figure out my wardrobe when I was little, it was very bold. And so she would always say, you know, is, is that really how you want to present first impressions are important? And like all these kind of things. And for me, I took it as that you were embarrassed of me and my decisions and how I like to present and so that was very difficult for me and I didn't quite understand that you were coming from um I don't want you to get hurt rather than you know um where I thought you were like embarrassed embarrassed which I never was I just didn't what I was fearing is her being bullied, is her being made fun of. And I, yeah, she was worried about my feelings, yeah. or I thought she was concerned about her own right. feelings. And being like, oh, I'm embarrassed by my daughter. I don't want people looking at her. I don't want people laughing at, at her because that reflects on me. Like, I thought that's where it was coming from. And so, um, so we, we talked about this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> So she knows all the stories. Yeah, no, no, it, 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 you know, it made me really sad when we had this re realization of how
how impactful uh, as parents our words are, even with the best intentions, um, how to the core we can hurt our kids. And, and for, most of, for most of us, it is absolutely yes. the opposite of what we, we mean, but it is what's coming out of our mouth. And, and acting out of fear because of, of what, as a parent, I think we see everything that can go wrong. At least I can, and I've talked to other parents. Jax, stop, sit, sorry. Um, so we see every single possibility that could go wrong. And if you do this, X, Y, and Z has happened. If you do this, L, M, N is going to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. And and we don't want you to fall on your face. And, we, you know, we want to yeah, prevent things, but it doesn't come out that way. And, and there's, like, really straightforward things where like I know my kid doesn't have balance yes. so if they're gonna walk across this tree limb they're gonna fall like 90% that's gonna happen is different from you know if my kid wears suspenders are they gonna make be made fun of like there are like fear-based reactions that, that are, are probably good that are validated and you know? valid and and you know as parents that's just what we do but we need to re we need to to let things be a little bit more. Let them be themselves again, not in danger, um, and then deal with the bullying or the hurt feelings or whatever it is that might happen when it happens. And then you can say, you know, legitimately. You know, it's your choice if you want to wear those suspenders mm -hmm. again. You know that the kids, for whatever reason, are going to make fun of you. So, but if you love them, then you should wear them. Mm -hmm. But at least now you know. Yeah, and another thing I talk about is it hurts way more hearing that mm -hmm. from my parents than it is from a stranger because I really care about their opinion. And I really want them to be proud of me. Where someone at school, even if it's a friend, it, it hurts way less coming from, not that it doesn't hurt, but hearing my parents say, like, I don't want you to wear those suspenders, even if that's not literally what they meant, that really, really hurts. And so getting that validation actually made it less harmful when I did come across someone who had something negative to say. So like, one of the things you always told me was how smart I was. And so when I came across someone who would like make fun of that area, like, oh, why are you taking longer on the test or whatever? I got those questions all the time. And I never thought of that as bullying or as like negative because it didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. Where when it came to areas where you always like were like worried about, and I was worried about it. And then other when that was said to me then it'd be like oh no <laughs> yeah no it, it's um i am so much better uh now i even even with all my training and um you know, knowing how to reframe things and to to not live in that place of fear you know old habits still happen and, and I'll, I'll start to say something and then I'll cringe. I'm like, I'm sorry. I mean, I catch myself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm not perfect, and, but I am so much better. Yeah. And I think our relationship is better. I think this all goes back to, to what's so important with our kids on the spectrum is accepting them for who they are, period. It um, doesn't mean we don't want to help them with challenges that they may face but accept them love them um i mean that's really core is and support them for who they are um it's really i think us as parents we, we have especially again i didn't know the girls had autism until they were 16. So I'm looking at them as definitely neurotypical and you, all the things that I did in my life when I was 10, 12, 14, you know, 
that they weren't doing and I wanted them to experience the fun and the, the joys that I had. But their life is their life. Their joys are their joys and they were very different than mine. Um, and I think it took me, you know, a long time, well, to, to understand that, that it's okay that they are different and they don't want to, you know, do all the things that I did as a teenager. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not that I was living through you. It's just what I knew. Mm -hmm. um, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I want to take a step back and give an example in case, like, this is too close to home. Because I get, like, when you're living stuff, you're like, yeah, but that really could happen. So, um, one of the rules I never understood in the classroom is there was only one bathroom pass. And this is fear-based parenting or uh, teaching because they believed if they let anyone go to the bathroom that maybe the entire class would just get up and leave at any time and that's not reality i've never known in college they <laughs> let you do that they let you do that and until that comes to pass that's when you put in that rule where when you put in that fear-based teaching then you had kids go just sitting there looking waiting for the pass because they had to go while like maybe one or two students every class would go and just chat in the bathroom and hog the pass. So then there would be other problems like that that would come up that didn't need to come up if they, that pass wasn't an issue. Like um, really great classes had the sign out, so you signed out. <laughs> and then you sign back in. So it, you only <laughs> and you saw who was out. So, um, and that kept a record of it so you could prove, oh, this person goes every single day or like, you know, there might be an issue where, um, and where when you punish everyone, it didn't, doesn't work, right? So that's an example of fear-based teaching where if you bring that back to, to parenting, you think about there could be situations where you're going, well, what if this happens? So let's put a rule in place. But it, that you can't prevent everything from happening. So then something outside of that is going to happen because you did that. And I also believe that we meet expectations. So if your expectation Absolutely. is Absolutely. you're going to do this, so I need to prevent it, you're going to see more of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um. Yeah, like the kids who I know who always feel like they're in trouble because their parents are like, you might do this, you might do that, you might do this. They are, don't care about getting in trouble anymore because they're always in trouble. So they're like, might as well break the rules and have it justified. Um, so at least I'm punished for something rather than, you know, nothing. So that's what I call fear-based parenting. And so we had a question or a comment about um, it's difficult to think on phrasing. And I'm not talking about rephrasing that sentence of um, getting bullied because of the tricycle. I'm saying not to say it. If you feel it, recognize that emotion of, of fear and you, sh you should check in with your body and recognize what emotion you're going through. And if you recognize fear, it's okay to feel it, but don't act on it. And make sure that you're in a rational place and in reality before you make a, a change or decision that, that could affect your child or yourself. That's where it's really important because reality just like, um, uh, can be distorted by your emotions, can be distorted by your mental state. So if you're not in reality and you're in a place of fear, you're going to react in irrational ways. And then that triggers the other person to act in the mm -hmm. same way. Yes. So you get fear-based reactions hitting each other because they're like, well, the, or anger, especially in defense mode, 
I could react out of anger because she reacted out of fear. I'm like, well, that's not actually what's going on. Now I'm angry because this is unfair. <laughs> um, and so you'll see more of that irrational reaction, and that's how we get little tiffs and mm -hmm. arguments going. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's kind of, um, it, it, it's like knee-jerk reaction for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, it was that protection mode, that, but it was fear-based. It was all my projecting what I thought might happen and all the coulds and mights. Um, but like Chloe said, if you sit back for a minute and look at what's really happening in front of you, going back to the bicycle, she's just riding her bike to school, okay? That's what she's doing. She's happy. She's having a good time. We don't know what's going to happen. Let's deal with that later. Um, so I think that's just, it's, it's doing self-check. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we have any questions. Hi, Richard. Hi, Patty. Hi, Corey. Uh, people say Asperger's people lack empathy, but how much of that is because they if you just put themselves in social situations form, um, no, <laughs> I think that's false. The reason why uh, people think um, those of us on the spectrum lack empathy is because we don't present emotions the same way as the neurotypical. And so from my perspective, actually the neurotypical is super, super emotional and irrational. <laughs> so, um, but it doesn't mean I don't have emotion. I do have very strong emotions, but they come out more physically um, where you'll see stimming, you'll see, you know, all those kind of behaviors. Stimming is a repetitive behavior or uh, vocalization. So you will hear chanting, you'll see kids spinning, hanging upside down, swinging, running, flapping their hands, that's all an emotional, that can be an emotional reaction. So you'll see things like that with those of us on the spectrum. And so it, it we don't react the same um, to emotion always. And then there's also, if you're in defense mode, then you're not going to feel the emotion. You're not going to recognize your emotions, um, which happens a lot if you're in an unhealthy mental state you won't recognize your emotions as much as, so you could be numb to them. Your body could shut them down because they're, um, they're a lot. <laughs> and when I actually, but just, I also think it's you know, a myth. Of, yeah, again, it's, a myth. it's a myth because so many, um, people on the spectrum are actually empaths and yes. feel everything. Yeah. Um, and, and that can shut them down mm -hmm. or be, you know, not react what we would think is appropriate and expected yeah. but it's mostly like you're just not you don't show it the same way that yeah. that is expected um yeah so there's a lot of different ways to learn um how to communicate that empathy in a way that other people can understand so you can get better at communication it doesn't mean that you lacked empathy before um there there's a difference between empathy and sympathy and i uh -huh. think they get mixed up where empathy is feeling the emotion like going through what the other person is going through and understanding that emotion and experience sympathy is going is being there for that person and like saying oh I'm sorry you're going through that and trying to like like you feel bad for them but you don't feel what that they're what they're feeling right so most people can do sympathy there's a not a huge population that can do empathy and a lot of empaths get overwhelmed in social situations because they do feel everyone's emotion 
and so they avoid that more so they're more you'll see more introverted people with empathy people with lack of uh, energy who are empaths um and a lot of us on the spectrum end up being empaths for some reason we are more connected to that um sense because it's one of the senses and so with those on the spectrum there's you can be hypersensitive to your senses um or you can be hyposensitive so that means you're like overly sensitive or you um lack that sense in a way so you are more attracted to it so you need more sti stimulation so if you lack okay. empathy then you're going to be more in social situations to get more energy from other people it doesn't mean you don't have it it means you need stimuli of emotion where those who have a lot of it don't need more of it there it's too overwhelming so you'll see that with smell taste touch and then also like direction spatial awareness empathy and like so many <laughs> different areas um I think that's that question. <laughs> that um, all right, so if you have any more questions, please leave it. Hi, Grammy. Hi, Karen. Hi, Haley. Hi, Deborah. Thank you guys for joining. We're talking about uh, fear based parenting. Um, I think another one of the, the big ones is school refusal. There's a lot of, and, and video games with mm -hmm. autism, you get those too. Um, and it goes from like, oh, what if my kid doesn't graduate? Oh, what if, you know, they can't find a job? And then what if they end up alone? You know, like it, it goes, goes it so spirals. far. It spirals and it just like, well, right now they're in what grade in middle school and they're having a hard time like stay there <laughs> and as parents we have all this outside noise of doctors and specialists mm -hmm. and the schools and teachers and um telling us if we don't do this we're a bad parent whatever yeah. it is and so i know i was so torn with what i was being told by all these specialists and, and schools that if I don't get, you know, you to school more, that you're, you're going to be held back. You're going to actually, I got a letter that they were going to call social services. Okay. I mean, they actually went that far. Mm -hmm. Um, cause Lillian was really sick with her Crohn's disease and I couldn't get her to school. Yeah. And, um, what I found out is they just send this out after you, it's a, it's an automatic email or letter that they sent out that after X number of, of absences. Okay. And it is to scare you. And it did, it scared the bejeebies out of me. Okay. Um, so then I'm scared that I'm going to get in trouble. They're going to get in trouble. And now I'm pushing even more. And what I needed to be doing was pulling back and being it's okay you're sick i get yeah. it okay you're not feeling well instead i was like we gotta go you gotta just at least go for half a day you know and it was definitely fear-based um yeah i remember we made a deal okay we're gonna go every morning and if you don't feel well you can call me but then i would call you and you'd be like well just one more hour yep. just stay until break just stay until blah 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 and then it, and then I would get scared the next day and be like, well, when I get overwhelmed, I can't trust that I can leave. So then I don't want to go anymore. Um, and it, so then there would be these consequences that like you didn't expect because you, you were both acting out of fear then. Right. Where if it was when, when she decided to drop all of that and I called her, I remember that too. It was like, eighth or ninth grade i think yeah i just went this is not working and i just something clicked in me that was i really need her to trust me she's yeah. not trusting me i need to be there for her i don't care what the school says i don't care what yeah. i i just 
I, I don't know what clicked, but it did. And I said, this, I can't let these outside forces keep dictating what I think my daughter needs. And so, so yeah, I called and I was expecting this huge fight to have to explain why I wasn't feeling well. And, you know, all this, and that she was gonna say, just stay until this time. And I was like prepared to be like, no, 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 I need to come home. So I called her and I'm like, I need to come home. And she went, okay, I'm on my way. And I went, wait, <laughs> I don't think I wanna go home. <laughs> Um, it was really interesting when I, so if, if we can, can we skip to when you now know you have autism yeah. and, um, and I start educating myself because we're already past doing the bad ABA therapy mm -hmm. and all that. I start really learning what is needed. Um, thanks to Danny Reedy and, um, Asperger experts. I started really um, listening to his podcast at the time and, and, and exploring what they were talking about. And I literally just started changing my thinking. And again, it was talking about not looking out of fear and really listening. And I, <clears throat> it would just be like, Hey, you know, Chloe, do you want to go to dinner? And a lot of times there would be an argument. I would make them. I used to be like, we're going to dinner. We're going as a family. I don't, you know, again, I didn't understand that the restaurant was a torture chamber. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't know this, um, that I was bringing them to this really painful place. <laughs> I just thought they didn't want to go with me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I remember saying, Hey, do you want to go? And she's like, no, I'm just, I, I don't feel like going. I said, okay, daddy and I are going. And her face, <laughs> She's like, um, oh, right. And when I could let go of all the things, the fear that I was thinking of why they're not going and participating in whatever it was, mm -hmm. whether it was Mother's Day, you know, brunch or grandma's birthday, um, that it, I wasn't taking it personally. You know, there wasn't the fear. And it's still, it's, it, it's still fear-based before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I could let go and it's like, hey, it's, it's okay. You know, this is, we, we developed this language um, that was like, hey, I'm just having a, a down day. I need some quiet time, you know. Um, and it, when I let go of that, um, it was freeing for me too because I didn't, I didn't have to go to the restaurant and wonder, you know, is she going to have a meltdown or is she going to pout, especially Lillian? <laughs> Lillian can make us miserable because, yeah. she, okay, she can make everybody miserable. Um, but she was miserable. I didn't understand that at the time, okay? And she would look like she was sulking and I'm like, oh my God, you know, so I didn't have all those fears again of going out and having her ruin our, our what I perceived at the time was ruining our dinner or our event. Now I'm like, hey, we're going to go out and have a good time. She can come if she wants. If she doesn't, that's okay. Yeah, and it went from there's going to be a meltdown every time to like, oh, we're recognizing it's coming. So now we can do something about it. And so they rarely happen. And if they do, it's like, okay, now you're getting a car for you. You can go home mm -hmm. and work it out. You know, where before it would be like meltdown at the event, ruining it, not just for her, but for people around her. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's learning um, for, for all of us, um, you know, now they're older too. So it's okay, I'm going to go, but I'm going to leave in an hour. And she can leave. She can get into an Uber and leave, and I can stay. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not, we all have to leave. Um, so there's there's some advantages to being older, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it's, it's really letting go of some of these, it, um, the control, too. There's control 
uh, us parents have, but it's it's not control like you think, like I want to control every movement. It's I want to control disaster from happening. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, and we've got to just let it go to, I mean, you prepare for it. I mean, we have our toolkits. We have yeah. our, you know, noise canceling headphones. We have, we have things to prepare for the unexpected. Yeah, there's like, we can prepare for, you know, a sensory overload in a way where it's like, there's going to be a slow buildup if I put myself in a situation like a restaurant. But like, I could still walk down the street and there could be something huge triggering like, a, a bus suddenly going by and honking its horn or like something that I can't prepare for. But, you know, I can bring headphones and I can bring like my circus dog and all these tools um, that I've figured out over the years that help me individually. And so if it does happen, what to do. And so, and we've talked about like what helps me in those situations and, um, communicated where if I were to shut down and go nonverbal, I know I can count on those around me to, to help me figure it out, how to, you know, get to a safe space from there. So um, not that we're like preparing, like walking down the street going, oh no, something might happen, no. but I have earplugs in my bag and, you know, all those kind of things. So that just in case something happens, but we're also, but we're not preparing, you know, for like the end of the world no, or like, no, ever, no. like, oh, if I go out, I'm going to be bullied and, you know, no. people are going to come up and say ableism stuff. <laughs> and, you know, like, there's so many things I could also be worried about. Like, someone's going to go up and be like, why are you wearing yellow every day? And like, and I've had comments like that, but I don't like sitting around preparing for it. Right. right. You know, like I, I, I used to. <laughs> um, but don't you think that, that also going back to the parenting out of fear, that when, um, when I could let go of that, it really boils down to you trusting me mm -hmm. and and me being okay with, with some me being okay with the unknown. Yeah. Um but, well, but once if you're you okay with it then I'm okay with right, it. <laughs> right. Right. And but once there was that trust, um yeah. I think our relationship you know, improved improved. So and yeah, I could talk to you about way more things because I wasn't afraid you were gonna judge it. And say, you know, that world will end if you do that. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard. Like I said, with us as parents, there's so much noise out there telling us the world is going to end if we don't do certain things. Um, and to get get rid of that in our head is is really hard. It, it's not an easy thing, but if you really look at what's in front of you. Um, I mean, what, what is the worst thing that can happen if you didn't graduate? Okay. It, it, but when we were in it, it felt like, oh my God, what happens if she doesn't graduate? What's going to happen if she didn't graduate? It would yeah. not be the greatest, but it's not going to be the end of the world. Yeah. I've definitely <laughs> encountered people going through health situations, going through depression, suicide, um, all these kind of things. And they're like, but I need my kid to go to school because they're not going to graduate. And I'm like, oh my God, why are you prioritizing that over their life? Mm -hmm. Like if someone told me I'm going to commit suicide, I'm like, leave school then. Like go work this out. That's really important. But for some reason that graduation is so scary yeah um i don't know why that fear is there um because i've i've definitely known people who didn't graduate to the thing who right. like got geds or figured it out they're fine <laughs> they're super fun. they're probably more fun than i'm people i know in college um like they're figuring it out they did what was best for them and so 
I don't think it like if you're so sick you can't go to school like figure it out like don't prioritize doing your homework or test like help get rid of the pain <laughs> yeah so that's what i was saying and that's what i was meaning it's like okay so even as parents if the worst thing happened is it really the worst thing yeah. it's probably not um and that that was huge to to come to that mm -hmm. uh awareness the, the worst probably isn't the worst <laughs> Um, yeah, and I think I I did I didn't think I was going to graduate until I did, and so I don't I don't think it was really that bad in my mind either. Um, because I remember people around me going, "Oh, you can only work at McDonald's if you uh, don't graduate high school. Like, what are you gonna do?" I'm like, "What?" That doesn't make any sense because there's like I can't imagine going to a job and they would ask like there's a lot of jobs out there like why would they ask you for your high school certificate um and there's so many people who who never graduated college who like figured out their stuff and didn't gra there's so many other alternate routes it's like that's, I don't, and I don't know where they got that from because if you're in high school, you're not working, you don't, you've never encountered that. So someone was telling them and like, that's such a scary, even if it's true, why would you scare people with yeah. that? That's so sad that all these kids were so afraid of failure that much. So it sounds like from Sammy, it sounds like you're no longer projecting those fears onto her and that's helping her relax. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> and it helped me relax. Okay. Not only did it help her, um, it, it really helped me to be more present. And, and I, by letting things happen, um, and I don't mean letting things get out of control. If I see she's in danger or she's, she's really falling apart, we, we, we address it. Um, but just by letting things more happen, um, I'm, I, it took a lot off of my shoulders. And then also we've worked out, if I do come to you with a problem, there's a difference between I want support yep. and I want advice. Yep. Um, so a lot of the times all I want is just to me to listen. Just someone to be like, you know, that sucks you're having a hard time. Um because when my parents would jump in and try to fix it or tell me, Oh, if you just do this it'll all go away, then it was mm -hmm. invalidating that I was going through a hard time. It's like, Oh, it's easy. I would just say this to the, that person, it would all stop. Like <laughs> Yeah. No. Um so we do, we talk about it because again, so, yeah. as parents, we want to jump in. Okay, I can help you. We can, we, we have an answer. To, we're well, gonna, we're, just get rid of that. Okay. We don't need that in our lives. That's um, hard. <laughs> you know, so I'll start and then I'm like, do you want advice or do you want, you know, and, and we actually say that sometimes out loud mm -hmm. um, and it helps. But a lot of time it's, as parents, it's validating. Yeah. You know, that sucks. Oh my God, that really that's, hurt. That sucks. It's best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and just, I am so sorry that you're feeling this way. Yeah. Um, is there anything I can do? And that's kind of our go to. Yeah. So that would be sympathy, and the empathy would be like, I'm mad for you. I'm mad with you. <laughs> which does which happen. Works. Which that, absolutely that, happens that depending on the situation. Too. That works too. Both of those are great. Um, I think empathy is like a little bit better, but that's harder to get to. <laughs> yeah, and it depends on on what the situation is. Yeah. You know, it definitely, I think we as parents feel what our kids feel a lot, mm -hmm. um, which is why we we ache for you when and, you hurt and, and want to protect feel you. What our parents yeah. are feeling. 
but we're better at hiding it. <laughs> parents can't hide that from their kids. I know a lot of parents think they can. You can't. So if you're having an off day the entire house to having an off day, that's because they sense what's going on. They sense there's something off. <laughs> like this question. Why is you wearing yellow every day any different from me wearing black every day? Well, I don't think it's any different, but there's some people who are like, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I love the graduation comment. We started homeschooling my daughter this year and it's been in the back of my head and my daughter is only in second grade not do, uh, about not doing this right. I need to let it go. Yeah, and this is easier said than done. Uh, absolutely. Obviously. Um, so, <laughs> it takes time. Um, first of all, recognizing that you're feeling this. That's is, huge. That is the first step. So, recognizing that you're feeling this fear. So, every time you go there, you go, you know what? This is fear. I'm not going to act on it. That's, that's the first step in a lot of people don't even recognize that they're feeling that. So it's a good thing you recognized it. And one of the things that I realized, I did realize, um, up until really 10th grade, your grades don't count, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Attendance counts, but grades do not. <laughs> so I knew that, so I was never really worried about the grades. Um, and, no, and you just regard. instilled work ethic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's ingrained in me. Yeah. <laughs> you try hard and you get what you, you know, you, if your grade's good or bad, it doesn't matter. As long as you're putting in the effort, mm -hmm. yes. Um, but I, you know, you, your second grade grade isn't going to go on their permanent record. It doesn't go on their permanent record until really, I think, 10th grade. Yeah. So when you can, but again, let go of it and not keep thinking about, and well, what about college? Especially, what about yeah, especially at that age, you should be focusing on making school fun and learning fun because she's going to have to do it for a long time. And I know a lot of people who starting – in elementary school were turned off by school and how much harder it was for them to get through. <laughs> like just make it fun so that they want to learn and they want to, you know, and figure out what she gets excited about and focus on that area. It's second grade. <laughs> yeah. Like I can't, there was this great post I saw today that was like, I don't know how, I, love I have a really hard time tying my shoes. I don't know multiplication. I'm really bad at spelling, but I'm a lawyer. <laughs> it was like something like that. It was like, he doesn't know how to tie his shoes, but he's a lawyer. Like we put these things and make this importance on things that are so not important. Like you can get Velcro shoes. Like there's ways around it. Like we have calculators now. Like there's, um, and as important as it might be in second grade to learn the times tables, it's in the big scheme of things, it doesn't make you an idiot if you never learnt that. <laughs> and you can use a calculator. Yes. <laughs> if you know how to use a calculator as a grown-up, I fine. mean, when, when I was in school, I was right before the smartphone. So, like, they were like, you're not always going to have a calculation, calculator in every situation. That was true. Now it's not. So... <laughs> <laughs> Let's get rid of that. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, Chloe, you're so bright. Like the color yellow, your future is bright to be You're doing yeah. great service. Thank she you. She is. She is. Thank you, Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Thank you for <laughs> for joining us. You you join us quite a bit. I'm usually on the other side of this camera, um, but thank you. Yeah, so we have like 10 minutes left. So if you have any last questions, please leave them and we'll get to as many as we can. <laughs> thank you guys for listening. Really, thank you. I know this is a harder topic to, to listen to. <laughs> well, 
It is, and it's um, it's something because we do parent coaching at um, Autism, and I think that <coughs> why I think I'm good at it is because I lived it, and I can talk about the mistakes I made, and you know, when we know better, we do better. Uh, you know, the, this is a very fluid relationship. <laughs> um, I'm always learning and trying to improve my relationship with my daughters and um, and researching things that work and a lot of things that don't work. Um, but, you know, it's, I think the other thing that is really important to, well, you tell me, is that I, I owned the mistakes that I made. Yeah. Um, you know, we had long talks about that everything I did was out of love and I always wanted the best for her, even, you know, and the things that I did that the doctors and specialists recommended that were not helpful were because I really was trying to support you and, mm -hmm. and your sister and, you know, they were wrong and I was wrong. And I think owning that, um, that none of it was out of malice, none of it was out of like trying to, to hurt you. I think that was a really, that was, well, it was, as much as it was important for you, it was important for me because I felt horrible, you yeah. know? I didn't want to be hurting you and, and giving you the impression that I was embarrassed by you or thought you want that you would that you thought that I wanted a different daughter you know and that was never the case but it, it was so sad to to hear that that's how I was presenting myself and so I think talking about it really you know as a parent you know to say I'm sorry that that was you know I, I'll do better now was really important yeah that was um, a really good moment. Yeah, we had a few of those where I, the other thing I liked is the I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, I love my answer <laughs> to a question where um, we've had so many situations where you're like, this is working, this isn't working, I don't know what to do. And that just made me feel better when you said, I don't know, rather than, you know, we're going to try this, we're going to try <laughs> harder, <laughs> and it'll work next time. Yeah. Um, yeah, those I don't know moments. Like, I remember um, with the, the computer, you kept taking away the computer, and there was, like, this um, one time where it was, like, you said, okay, if I don't go on the computer for, like, a day or something, then I could have it back. And I kept taking it. And it was, like, a week of this. And you were like, oh, I don't understand. Why can't you just stay off it for a day? All you have to do is stay off it for a day. And you have it back. And it was so genuine that it just caught me off guard. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you're like, well... This isn't working. I don't know what to do either. <laughs> and we both like had this like really great moment. And I remember that was the first time in so long that we were talking about the computer, but I didn't go, oh, now I need the computer. <laughs> like it was the first time because we had this genuine moment and like suddenly life off the computer seemed better than on the computer because I've never had a moment like that online. And so when we had more and more of those moments, like I wanted to spend more time with you and I wanted to talk to you and share my life and myself. Like those, it was really important, those the apology moments, the vulnerable moments, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like just staying in reality is so important. Like um, one of the other things that you would do is you'd go into the future a lot and mm -hmm. that really bothered me. Like, well, like I would want to stay in the present, <laughs> especially in defense mode, that future is really, really scary. 
and you would go, oh my God, you're going to graduate high school soon. And I'm like, I'm in ninth grade. What are you talking about? I'm afraid of high school. I don't want to think about college and moving out on my own and all this. And she'd put like these really scary thoughts in my head. She thought she was being exciting. I was excited about high school for her. She wasn't, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't catch that right away. I did catch that more with Lillian, of not wanting to grow up. But I didn't catch that quite as much with you. I wanted to grow up, but that was... In high school, four years is a long time. <laughs> it is. Time is different. When the younger you are, the longer life is. <laughs> and time is extremely long. Now it goes by much faster. I know, isn't that weird? But, um, yeah, I've talked about that. It's important that you recognize that with kids. It's, I can be really scary talking about something like that when they're not ready. Um, yeah, so waiting, it, I say it like treat it like, like a scared animal. Wait for them to come to you. Because <laughs> they will. Yeah. Um, when you try to force those conversations out, they don't go as well. Right. Well, this was good. This was fun. Thank you all for having me. Thank you, Chloe, for inviting me on tonight. Um, I, hope, I hope that um, my story <laughs> of my bad parenting for my periods of time <laughs> have helped you. <laughs> but my big thing is always when you know better, you do better. And um, and don't beat yourself up when you make those mistakes. Just learn from them. Uh, like I said, I still can fall into those old patterns and I stop myself and I say, I'm sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Owning owning them and, um, and doing better. Just keep trying to do better mm -hmm. as parents. Uh, that's all we can do. Well, I thought of one of the times dad did it to me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> He's watching. <laughs> so I remember being Jackson's when I was first to be over. <laughs> when I was little, I didn't want to take medication. That was really hard for me. So I remember having a cold and I had to take the awful uh, grape syrup. And like medication has gotten tasted better today. <laughs> um, but I had like that awful. Uh, grape syrup, whatever it was, and I was just like crying. I didn't want to take it, and he was like trying so hard to get me to take it. He's like, "If you take it, you'll feel better. Why don't you want to help yourself?" Like doing all of those like fear-based things, mm -hmm. like you know, like um, he he tried every single approach he could think of besides just shoving it in my mouth, <laughs> um, and I it was like. You can't have dinner until you do it. You can't have the, the you know. Okay, please just take it and I'll give you candy. <laughs> like, <laughs> everything. And then he finally, like, after crying and, like, I don't know, an hour or two of this, I would, like, would sit, we were both sitting at the dinner table the whole time. I wasn't allowed to leave. So I took it. He just finally goes, boy, I know it's really, really hard. And I know we were both really, really tired, but if you just take it, you'll feel better. And I'm here for you. <laughs> and then I took it. <laughs> he went, what just happened? <laughs> because he validated my feelings and, like, made me feel safe. I was able to take it. And so that's, that's what I mean by fear-based parenting versus reality. When you stayed in reality and didn't go, if you don't take it, this will happen, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it's, I was able to do it. <laughs> All right. Um, so check out our website, autism.com. We have all sorts of cool programming that you can check out. We are having our launch party April 9th in Redondo Beach. You're all invited. So RSVP if you, um, want to come down and, and, 
here in person what we have to offer and and, and meet Chloe. <laughs> um, that's uh, we have our adult support group next Thursday, mm -hmm. not tomorrow. Next Thursday, uh, we're gonna try. We're gonna be working on bringing back our parent support group shortly. I'm looking forward to that, and um, actually, an online support group that I'm working on trying to get that up and running. I just have to make sure it's perfect um, before we, we launch that. Um, Sign up for Life Map, Team Map. Mm. That's my favorite service we offer. Great services. We have parent coaching. Um, and we're going to start some socials too. Mm -hmm. so check it, it's all on our website, ourtism.com. Come back See next you week soon. and meet Iris. <laughs> Thank you. Stay colorful.